now. What to do, players and trainers? It's your boy, the Blazing Squid, with LDL Season 7, Week 7, Power Rankings. But I'm not alone. I'm joined by the infamous, what I call the number one seed and best player at the moment in LDL, Carlos. <laughs> Thanks for that introduction. Um, hopefully we can keep that going as we're hitting like the halfway point now here. Things are going to start to get yeah, week seven was really, really interesting. Uh, let's jump into the matchups. Let's see what we did we have here. So the schedule for week seven was Carlos versus myself, and we're commentating this. And Carlos came out with a win. Mark, uh, I mean Matt versus Brandon. Matt won. Shay versus DJ. DJ won. Jordan versus Steven. Steven won. Alejandro versus Chris. Alejandro won. Brandon versus Jesse. Brandon won. Anthony versus Mark. Anthony won and Arthur versus Trig. Arthur won. Were any of these matchups surprising for you, the, the winners, Carlos? Um, I mean, not really. Not really. You, <laughs> that you? sounds really bad, but um, wow. some of these play, some of these players, I just like expected to dominate. Like we have Trig, um, which I guess we'll we'll get to him in a bit yeah. versus Arthur and. That wasn't too surprising. Yeah, I see what you I think the most surprising from... Yeah, but the most surprising for me, I think, has to have been um, versus Anthony. Because I, like, I've played Mark, and I know he's really good. So, like, the way that that match went down was really unexpected. Yeah, I know what you mean. I, I'm excited to get into that match already. Uh, and then, as you guys can see there in the conferences... Uh, I'm in third seed. Carl's in first seed. Best record. Not the best differential, but I still say he has a head against Arthur. That's number one seed in my opinion. <laughs> but that's enough rambling. Let's jump into our rankings of 16 to 9. And 16, we have the Kansas City Kinglers. I, I guess the number one I, uh, I want to put in, I have just one really, really, really big key which I didn't like, was the stack attacker versus the needle pick. Oh my god. Oh my goodness, yeah, that I... The, the plays with the, need, the needle queen, I wasn't like understanding some of them because um, he started, he let off with the Pelipper, right? Yeah. And this thing can carry Thunderball, it can Thunder Punch, and it's it's naturally faster. So I didn't see like the reasoning behind staying in on that. Front. Like if you wanted to set the rain and then switch out, like I could understand that, but just um, just staying in was kind of like iffy. Yeah, I see what you mean. I, I expected, especially since he brought the stack attack, I was like, okay, maybe it has the Sugar Berry, and we didn't even see a Sugar Berry. It just went straight down, and I was like, yeah, yeah. It was ridiculous. So like, oh, I mean, my he, God. he, Trig. He, he, he had the two um, resistances. So if he was packing the thunder, the thunderbolt, he could have switched into either the stack attacker or the um, ah, the name Zygarde. escapes me right now. Zygarde? Uh, or the Zygard. Um, the, uh, the other steel. Oh, the other steel one? The, uh, she, so, he had so many options he, in that, in that, yeah, um, <laughs> Fortress. Um, he had so many switches that first turn, it just, it just, um, it seemed a waste to keep, um, the Pelipper in that turn. So, yeah, um, uh, my biggest advice trick, as I mentioned in my, my, um, uh, Pickums video, I, I would suggest you reach out to other players, like, get information. Like, Arthur's a high tier player. You have to get information from other players that have battled him before to kind of find out what how he plays and how can you can counter. Cause that was a hard match to watch. Oh yeah, I can't, I, I mean, it's gonna be a while till we get to Arthur, but there's definitely a lot to be said about, about his, his, like the way he played it, that match. Yeah, but I think that's enough for Trig and let's move on to the next player. The Clearfield Charmanders and Jordan. What do you have to say about Jordan? Um, <laughs> again, I, I, it was a turn one, like 
his placement for me was definitely like a turn one decision because he has this Rotom in front of him and he has the town flame and for whatever reason he decides to SD up on that. So I mean just from turn one it seemed like that match was going downhill. Yeah, I completely agree. I, I've never seen someone sword stands in front of a mon that has the advantage over it. Like I don't know what he was expecting Steven to do other than Volt Switch or Thunderbolt. Like, I don't know. And, yeah, and, and um when No, go first. You go first. <laughs> um, I mean, Steven played that match really well. well um, and then uh, he, Jordan went for his Z move and it didn't kill the Vaporeon. And he ended up that mon, so that was definitely like a bit of bad luck on his, on his side. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, a problem I, I, I see a lot with Jordan's team is it's very, it's fragile. That's the problem. It was like. It can dish out hits, but it wasn't taking hits. Like, I think Gardevoir went down to a poison jab super easily after a like, U-turn. Um, Ice Beam, Oko, the Guard Chomp. If it wasn't for the Focus Sash, the Greninja would have died. Like, nothing in this team could really take hits. Like, they can dish out hits, but taking hits was a huge problem for Jordan this week. And Steven used that to his advantage, so props to Steven on that. He yeah. actually moved up um, two spots, I believe, this week. Yeah, he did. As Jordan fell down one spot, Trey has not moved. Um, but yeah, I, I just made this adjustment because I do feel that DJ was playing better than Jordan overall. And as we jump into 14 spot, which is the Chelsea of Fell Stingers, DJ, I, I kind of messed up. I feel like DJ should be above Shay, but we'll get into that. How, what did you feel about DJ's performance this week? <laughs> uh, this week, I again, I was really trying to pay attention to those um, like first few turns to see like which way the match would go, and um, he switches Beware into full Corona, which I thought was like really weird because it was obviously about to start setting up. Um, I didn't see a lot of predictions. But um, he still came out on top, so he was doing something. I do believe, because uh, I helped um, test run his team. But where should have lived the Fiery Dance, even at plus one? It had a salt vest. I think a Fiery Dance was like 60 something percent it would do, 64 or something like that. And then after, with the plus one, even with the plus one, it would be like about 90 or something like that. So the crit mattered, I believe, 100%. Because when we did our test runs, that, and it had rock slide, that's like the main reason why he brought it in. So that crit was super unfortunate for DJ. Uh, but overall, I think he had solid prep for his <laughs> team. Uh, Togekiss really put in a lot of work this week. Put in a lot of work. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. It was just coming in and roosting and air slashing everything in sight. Yeah, exactly. And, and the fact that we didn't see an ice punch, uh, mega low punch, really put it. Like it gave it the edge and stuff like that, but I do yeah, see. Yeah, it was DJ, um. DJ's getting up there. Just saying. It. Yeah, <laughs> and um, I mean, uh, we could probably just jump right into Shay because he's right below him. Um, I I didn't understand some of the plays he was making. Um, he went for return on the toga kiss, and it, um, it wasn't even a two A KO, but he decided to stay in another turn instead of switching. So I wasn't, I don't know, there were some plays there that I wasn't really understanding. Yeah, I, I think his also, um, the Icy win Milotic was not the best coverage overall, in a sense. I, I feel like Ice Beam would have been better, or maybe even carrying some type of static, like Toxic or something like that. Because the Icy win was not enough to take down the Togekiss. And my logic is already naturally faster than Togekiss, so it's like I do was I don't understand that. Say so I just don't. <laughs> I mean, he was he was making some predictions, and um, he was he was creeds, but it was just um, 
DJ, he he had the end game. He was thinking about the end game with the um, with the crook. Yep. Um, so that he came out on top of on that. Yep. So congratulations on DJ for that. Shay, you have some work to do, my dude. <laughs> but nothing that you can't bounce back from <laughs> for sure. You had a phenomenal FPL season. I've told you, bro. You need to bring whatever you did. Yeah, there, coming in. Just bring it to LDL. I know LDL is tougher, but you can do it. You can, dude. <laughs> I was I was definitely expecting like um, a bigger splash from him going into this season. I told him it was a fluke, but you know I'm usually wrong. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh wow, I actually got somebody. Who is this, Miss? I got Senior Buns. Smoothie buns. Oh well, he commented on my power rank, my pickles. All right, <laughs> wherever that is, thank you, sir. Uh, let's jump into the 12th <laughs> spot. The Midwest Milk Tanks and the coach Chris. Hmm, that was pretty. Chris. Uh, um. Oh man, this the, is a good one. the one thing I have to say about e EQ on Charizard. Oh my God, I, when I saw that, I almost lost. It's a. I would say EQ on Charizard is really, really good coverage. Really good coverage. It was because like the perfect, the perfect switch in was the um, was the Heatran. So, I mean, I definitely would have never expected that in the match. Yeah. But I guess that's what makes it fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that was a, a little help from um, and, uh, our buddy Matt. Matt helped him out with that set. So, hey, you should run that. It's good coverage. So that was awesome. To watch. Yeah, it was. He was running like. Decent coverage for this match. He had um, Grass Knot for the Memo Sign, and he had um, the Oka Berry on the Clef Key. Yeah. So that was um, those were some good things that I saw at that match. Yeah, yeah, that was really solid coverage overall. Um, but his opponent just had better, better prep overall. Um, one thing I will suggest, Chris, which I was talking to Matt after he kind of suggested the sets. Um, their Heliolus also gets access to U turn. Like, you didn't have to be locked into Vault Switch, knowing that the Raichu was a potential mod to come in, the Mamoswine's another potential mod to come in. That, that's why on, on Thunderous, I carry Vault Switch and U Turn um, for that reason, because I don't want to get stuck in <laughs> against a ground type like Gastrodon. That's why I run the Yeah, U -turn. yeah. Uh, towards the end, it got, it got a bit stally there towards the end of that match. I think they did it on purpose. <laughs> but, um, I mean, like you said, I'll. Uh, I think Alejandro, like he, um, he he clicked Toxic on just the right turn, and he finally got the Toxic off on the on the Cresselia. Yep. So that was nice because I was not looking forward to watching that many turns of a match. Yeah, I know what you mean for sure. Same. Uh, let's jump on to the 11th spot with the Russellville Rockets and the Ratty Blue Wizard, their coach, uh, moving up two spots. So that's impressive from last week. Yeah, definitely. He had he had good prep. He had good initiative. The Gallade was just putting in the work. It was it was a good match. No, for sure. I, I think he came into this match knowing what he needed to do. I, I think the first thing he kind of mentioned in the video, which I love when people can actually upload videos and stuff, but he said, uh, this is going to be a fast paced game because I know the way Jordan plays. He came into the match. He says, I know how the way Jordan plays. So I just need to do this, this and that. Uh, he never second, like second, second guessed his moves. He's like, mm, you know, I'm just gonna switch into this or I'm switching to that. Um, he did a lot of good analysis throughout the game. Like uh, when the Greninja lived on one because of the sash, he said this could have the Water Shuriken. So I'm gonna switch on to Vaporeon, which got it a very clean switch in against the Garchomp. And then you know, we're living on two, getting the Ice Beam. It was. That was a pretty awesome match to watch. Really fun. Yeah. Uh, Amoongus. Amoongus. Such an amazing <laughs> also, wall for Cartana. Yeah, sense. and I was surprised that the Dustin was able to take that out. I've never... I, I mean, I usually see Dustin used defensively. Yeah. But um, that was a two-shot with the Fire Punch, so that was cool. Yeah, that was. It's great to see, like, defensive mods putting in offensive work. I love that. I love that. 
but um, overall, Steven, congratulations uh, on the win because you did amazing this week. This is the Steven we're, we're used to watching, not the few weeks prior. But all his other matches have been good too, actually, pretty close. But just, it's good to see him finally get a win. For the most part. Yeah, I felt so bad because, like he said, that um, our matches from last season were like still kind of like affecting him. So I felt kind of bad about that. <laughs> Don't feel bad, man. This is Pokemon. <laughs> but next up, oh my god, in the tenth spot, the Outback Kamala, <laughs> Jetman ninety nine. I feel like this guy should be in sixteen spot. Oh man, this this match. It was just, uh, it was a hard match. This... It was a hard match for him. Um, I, I some of some of the switches were definitely questionable, and um, but I think the SD play, um, you know, once the Needle King really got going, um, maybe was unnecessary, because even if he switched out, um, he, he still had the Fair Thorn to come in into the possible. Um, Wrote, wrote him wash so <laughs> it was definitely unfortunate and it was kind of hard to watch there towards the end uh no yeah uh i think i've jesse i'm, I'm warning you once again my dude i'm about to go ham on you so if, if you want to mute for the next minute go but jesse you came into this match the first thing i always tell you is you have to stop putting swords dance as your number one option when it comes to pincer like dude just get rid of the needle king man i don't, I, I was like i was like i don't know why i i for it's true the crit was really unfortunate because i think he wanted to get his um memento off or whatever that move is to get his pincer in clean but like needle king was already doing so much work just get rid of it swords dance and another opportunity because even if you did sd the rotom was in the back and Rotom was going to be eating whatever move you dished out at it. Um, another issue I had with this team was your team was very reliant on sticky webs. Because Brennan was running no speed on his Needle King. You were running a bulky Gudra. So like, your, your team was slow and it needed the sticky webs, but you didn't set up sticky webs early on. So it kind of like really threw back your team. Um, that's why Needle King was able to like really just sweep because it, it yeah. was naturally faster than Kudra. <laughs> like if you had just bed crap, by one point, you could have legit made a difference to so, like Needle King soloed your team it was atrocious I, I i couldn't watch it like i didn't want to watch it i was like this is not happening like jesse did not just get swept 6-0 and it was funny because last season he said i got 5-0 by brennan i have to prevent that and he didn't he made it worse he got 6-0 so i was like dude but yeah jesse you gotta stop considering the swords dance i, I understand uh pincer's such a scary mon and people are gonna want to switch out but when you're playing high tier players like Arthur, Carlos, Matt, Steven, Brennan, we know this mentality that says, I can't let Pincer set up. I'd rather just sack a mon than let him set up. You know what I mean, Carlos? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, with the, pin the Pincer and the Masquerade, um, he had no, he had no um, hazard control either. I, I like if the rocks went up, that was it. You know, he didn't have that many switch-ins for the, for that. That's true. And then that would yeah, that would win the opportunity any. for him to set up. Exactly. Yep. So that that makes it even harder for him to set up, which is what you said. Is you know he's trying to do. That's his main goal. But if he can't get that in safely, then it's, that's it makes it harder for him. Even Siphon like nothing. Like, it was just, ah. Uh, I think Seismic Toes didn't outspeed the Needle King. Gujra wasn't able to outspeed the Needle King. I was like, what did he have speed investment? I think it was just Masquerade and Pincer. Those were the only two mods 
that he actually had speed investments. Everything else was reliant on the sticky webs, but you did not set up the sticky webs. So, in a sense, it's a bad call. It's a really bad call, Jesse. I want you to like, ah oh man, just capitalize on those. Like really, lay out your game plan, review it, say this is what needs to be done, and follow it. I've been in your shoes. I know what it is to like. Yeah, and um. Not lead correctly. It's just atrocious. It hurts. It hurts a lot. Yeah, I think maybe also like um ease back on the like on the pincer on the pincer reliance because it's not gonna get like sweeps every single game and it's it's a bit unrealistic to expect that from it. Yeah, yeah. Like I think his like he always goes to either two mods. Yeah, being like pincer. Pincer is like the main his number one go to mod for sweeps. Uh, I like to spread out without my team. I, you also like to spread it out. Arthur spreads it out. Everyone else kind of spreads it out. It's But the problem is just it's his draft overall. His draft was very bulky in a sense. So maybe for next season, we consider going super bulky. Because like, to have Reggie Rock and Reggie Ice, I can never do that on the same team. I just can't. But that's enough uh, about Jesse in from my end. Because <laughs> I am, I could go all day. Yeah, the, the, uh, the match, the match says it all. It does. If you guys have not watched Jesse's match, his link is down below. Check it out, guys. I, I could also put the link to the video. Um, it's hard to watch, but it's a learning curve for all of us. I would say for sure. Jump into number nine, Alejandro, the Lakewood Trevenants. This is a good match. This was amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can we get a round of applause from where, wherever you guys are at home? Give a round um, of applause to Alejandro right now. Because that was a good match. It was. He he was... Yeah, he was he was well prepared for this. And, um, I mean, like I said, towards the end, he knew just when to click Toxic and end and, and the match. Uh, no, for sure. Um... I, I think overall, I love the sub. The substitute Heatran was such a great scouting mod for him. It was. It, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. That thing was able to come in. And I mean, it, it allowed him. <laughs> it allowed him to um, stay in on the landers, which you know normally wouldn't be able to do. Get off the toxic. Um, he actually tried to get off the Magnus Storm, but he missed uh, I think one, so that was unfortunate. But it was it was a great use of Heatran. Oh yeah, it was. It was. Um, what was I gonna say? That was not like that was not just it. I, I think the lead Mammal Swine, a very obvious lead, but it worked out. It did work. It, it got the rocks up, which was able to just cripple the Charizard super easy. Um, I don't think he had any form of hazard removal. So that was a very good analysis. And besides maybe a defog Lando. But other than that, that was great analysis by Alejandro into this match. Um, scouting, I think he figured out that Heliolisk and Lando are potential Scarfers. And he was able to capitalize on that pretty early on in the game, which gave him a, a huge edge towards the end. Yeah, and he knew just when to bring in the right you on that Helios can put into work. Exactly. That, that was nice to see. Chris, consider a U turn next time around because could have given you better momentum in that sense. But yeah, it was just, I think he had, he countered it perfectly um he, yeah he countered perfectly because he had the cobra berry uh miss magius uh which was able to live the knockoff which was amazing the amount of uh bulky play invested to just it was able to take a few hits and actually even get live a knockoff which is a, i think that was amazing uh just pointer for chris chris miss magius is naturally faster than <laughs> Charizard, so you might want to reconsider. I don't know, maybe it was a death <laughs> fodder, but you might want to reconsider that. 
next time around, buddy. Because Charizard did have another entry. Yeah, and after the um the berry, after the berry was used, he stayed down on the second Mystic Fire. So I don't know, like, if he was just sacking that or, like, if he didn't think he had, he had any switch ins. Yeah, exactly. Like. I don't know. It's just he didn't have much. He didn't. I don't think he was. Um, Chris wasn't equipped. Uh, I, I've just never seen this side of Alejandro. Alejandro really came out playing with fire out here, and he was he. Uh, Which is Chris why he, a lighter, he went up to spot. Uh, Chris had a lighter. Alejandro had a flame torch. That's what. He, that's how it went down. Like legit. That man was just flamethrower everywhere. <laughs> <sighs> Whoa. But I think we've kind of summed up our 9 through 16, would you say? Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, I mean, they're, they're, we still have the whole rest of the season. And these guys could definitely still move up. For sure. No, anything's possible. We've seen Brennan go from like... I've seen him go from last to actually making playoffs, which is crazy. And it happened just around like this time. Like right around <laughs> halfway through the season, he said, yo. And he went on a winning streak. Like, and he made playoffs, guys. So... You guys can do it as well. I mean, he did move out of the out of the first slide into the second. <laughs> he did. He did. Especially with like back to back losses, first and second week. But let's jump onto the eighth seed. Eighth seed, we have the Moon Valley Mewtwo's. Um, I really one through eight can vary. To tell you guys the truth, all these players up here have been doing really awesome. Like, uh, I don't think, I don't know, Brandon, it was Brandon versus Matt. This matchup, this was a pretty good matchup. It was a good match overall. I think it finished 1-0, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, Brandon had a lot of initiative and the sticky webs were, were really good on his part. I think if he'd gotten maybe one more flinch, he could have had the whole match. But the luck just wasn't on his side for that. <laughs> Yo, those flinches, man. I, I just, personally, I, this season, I cannot rely on RNG. You guys already know that. But yeah, Brandon <laughs> uh, Brandon versus Matt. Um, Brandon, he made it. He tried to make some really hard reads early on, which kind of gave him a huge step back. But he was able to stay in this game because... Um, Matt was able to make two amazing reads. We'll get into Matt later on. But the 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 poison jab, pre Marina switch in, that was tough, my dude. That was hard to watch. Yeah, yeah, that it was I mean <sighs> I mean we'll talk about that once we get to Matt, but that was that was uh, that was a definitely um an important turn, I think. No, no, that was that was a, a huge crucial uh, turn, especially um, which I have capitalized enough on this. But Brandon have a, has a very strong fairy steel dragon core, so as soon as like you kind of chip down his core, it, it he brings it every week for a reason because it's that strong. So once you start chipping down that core, it's it becomes a problem for Brandon, but um, it was a good match. Uh, some things like I think Matt did some good prep overall. Um, I remember <laughs> living a Dragonium Z. That was crazy. I was like, "What?" But <laughs> sticky webs were good. I think it was just the switches, really. Damn the it. switches is what really cost you, Brandon. This yeah. Match. Uh, taking a, a Glacier. I mean. That hurt. Um, did you really need the golf match? I don't think you really needed the golf match. <laughs> the grass knot on the... The grass knot? No. Uh, oh, the grass knot. Especially not, especially not towards the end. Oh, uh, yeah. That was pretty Yeah, good. I mean, it was expected, but it was it was, it was was still good. It was. It was. I uh, can't, can't get mad. Um, I was expecting Rindleberry. I was like, come on, Rindleberry, Rindleberry. And we didn't see a Rindleberry. <laughs> uh, no, it, was, it was good. Uh, super unfortunate. 
He, he did get a nice crit that kind of helped him stay in the game. I think, if, yeah, also like Hacks really kept Brandon in, the, in this match up. But I, I can, I expect more from Brandon. I think you can do better, my dude. Um, I oh, definitely. Yeah. It, this match came down to like the last few turns. But Brandon has a very scary squad. Uh, very, he has improved a lot. Him and Antony have both improved a lot since last season. So I'm very proud of these. Two. Oh man, just wait till we get to that. Oh yeah, <laughs> but I think we can jump up to Mark now and the Arizona Bull Coronas. Uh, Mark's matchup. Oh man, <laughs> I think we'll leave. Oh yeah, stuff I mean, we we'll get to Antony, but let's talk about a few of Mark's <laughs> faults. The Zatu play, mm. Mark. Why? Why? I don't, I don't understand why you see it on the Um, off. I mean... Uh, I thought, like, the first couple turns, I, I was really rooting for him because the smir the Smirgle tech, it was it was really nice. Oh, yeah, I've never seen the, the Magic like, Coat. Like, you, you oh. usually think of the Magic Coat Sport. I, I, usually you see Mew and you're like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And he just took it out of commission within, like, the first two turns. So that was that was really nice. No, that was uh, that was. I gotta give you props to that, Mark. And then especially the fact that he he was able to outspeed and get a spore off. So I was like, wait, what? So that threw me off. So I said, oh, this is a defensive mute. So the one move, one thing I do find questionable, uh, the sticky what play. That was kind of yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, because that, that helped um, Anthony more than it hurt him. Like, once we get to him, we'll talk about that. But that was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because if you look, if you uh, analyze his, Antonio's whole team, he had a Muck. I think Muck is like base 50. He had the Mega Audino. Audino is like base 30. He had the Jellicent. Jellicent's not that fast. Uh, you already know you outspeed Mew, so Mew's not that fast. Uh, Incineroar base 60 not that fast like all these mons are not that fast so I was like mm, I don't know if sticky webs was really the right call to even set up I, I personally yeah. I would have just transformed on the Mew or something else and kind of scout what movesets his opponent was running to like have note for that but sticky webs really just it worked against him. Yeah, it, it didn't seem like something that should have been something that should have been on the priority list. Yeah. I would just hold that back. But um, other than that, he almost did pull through though. The transform Smurgle is always almost. amazing tech. That is just amazing, phenomenal. Yeah, he that was, was able to reverse sweep. That was really cool. Almost reverse sweep. That was crazy. He was. But but then the berry came in and I was like, oh man, like yeah. th this whole match had me like on the edge of my seat. It did. Uh, another thing was, uh, Mark, you only you didn't have. I don't think you had a Gliscor check other than the Mega Gyarados, because at the end of the turn we did see he went for Hidden Power on the Gliscor and it did not affect him, so he was probably running Hidden Power Ground. So I was yeah. Like, how how else were you gonna yeah, test the Yeah, I thought that was kind of. Weird. I was expecting the hidden power ice. I was like, yo, okay, hidden power ice, not affected. I was like, what? Threw me off. So maybe his plan, his plan, to set up with Gyarados and then take him out that way. Yeah. So then I didn't even go for a waterfall at all. No, yeah, I don't. It had wait, Dragon Dance, Crunch, Earthquake. Yeah. So as you mentioned, you didn't go for waterfall. And Waterfall is stabbed, so that would have been doing more to the Incineroar, too. Uh, yeah, and I mean... <laughs> Just questionable plays. I mean, towards the end, I, it happens to the best of us. It we, does. Yeah. But I think we can move on to spot number six and the Salt Lake City Swampers, who have moved up two spots from eighth to sixth <laughs> uh, this week. 
I think we covered everything with Justin. Yeah. <laughs> he just he did really really well. Yeah, he. Yeah, he saw the threat in front of him, and he's like, "I'm not letting you set up." And then he just proceeded to sweep with that mon. Yeah. So that was really nice to see. Um, uh, I think Jesse went into the Gudra on the knockoff, and then um, Brennan expected him to switch out, expecting another knockoff into the pincer. So he went for a rock slide. I thought that was kind of nice. I mean, he didn't switch out, but that was that would have been nice. A nice prediction there. Oh yeah, I know for sure, for sure. I think um, Brennan had better checks to Jesse's team than Jesse anticipated because that Snorlax ate that Draco meteor like breakfast for breakfast. Yeah, like what? Do you know what set he was running? Because that thing was fat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He has some of the. Uh, I have it. I should have it here. Uh, let me just pull it up real quick. Yeah, no, I think it was ridiculous. I, I had like gended and stuff. I was like, dude, this is nasty. <laughs> like, why? But he was. Uh... Okay, no, that... it's, it was nice to see Nido King putting in all that work, though. No, Nido King was legit the MVP. A 6 0 sweep. Oh, that's not this chat. Okay, great. That's. Well, while we continue on with the next I mean, question. you... Because I am a... <laughs> you see it all the time where where people say that Nido King and Nido Queen are really good, but in this match, you get to see why. Just because the, the, the move pool is so wide, he was able to take on everything. Yeah, it was. It was... Uh, okay, I found it. So it was... Nope, never mind. I didn't find it. <laughs> Lies... Um, I just know it was fat. It was just fat, and I had it on showdown. I even deleted it. Psst. Actually, he, I think he ran the same. Okay. <laughs> I can't reveal it. I'm gonna have to PM it to you later. I can't reveal it on here because uh, stuff. <laughs> it's confidential. Oh. <laughs> all right that's fine that's right. fine but yeah that thing was eating hits for days for sure for sure uh but moving on to the blazing squid ha ah! to you <laughs> uh <laughs> <laughs> this is a really good matchup man i think this is i had fun for sure i had fun this match uh i could have capitalized i think um some some other PokeTubers actually reached out to me and said, dude, uh, you could have stayed in after the hammer arm and just recovered on the, the on the Metagross, which was 100% true. I, I think I made a few bad switches, which um, Carlos was able to capitalize on. Um, the match could have gone either way, guys. Could have gone either way. Carlos oh, it's definitely. Really good prep. Yeah, there's um, no I just I was out calc like he calculated every move. I, I was like I think I was like I was so confident. I was like, oh, I'm gonna kill this Gastrodon with an earthquake <laughs> to see it live on one broke my heart. Oh my god, that lived that lived on one. That was that was insane. Um no, I mean the, the whole match was was crazy. I was I, I felt like I was making maybe too many switches like towards the beginning. And I, I had to try and slow that down later on. Um, but I mean, um, the prep that you had on the thunders that was that was definitely scary. Had you gone? Had you gone for just just one like? Um, if I had gone for it, what did you have? It would have been uh, a nasty match. Nasty plus a That would have been a totally different match. Yeah, yeah, but I I knew that. Um, if I could just get in against that build, and I mean, I, wa I was set. I, knew <laughs> I you watched were your run video the next Zap morning, I and I saw it. that you were. <laughs> and you, you like, you called it too. You were like, "That's that's that's a scarf mill tank." And I like after watching video, I wondered why you didn't try to play for that or whatever, because it. I mean, it definitely was. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I also went back. And the problem was, uh, as you can see, I'm calculating for Miltank, 
you brought in the Zapdos. So I said, why would you bring in Zapdos when you have a Scarf Miltank in the back? So it really threw off my game as Zapdos came in. I, I said, okay, hold up. I put Miltech to the side. I started calculating for Zapdos. And then I was like, oh, wait. As soon as Zapdos went down, I was like, oh, shoot, Miltech. And like, it came all back to me. I was like, oh, damn. I was like, calculating for it, forgot, came back. It was too late. But it was really good prep. I, I think the switches in the beginning really gave you huge leverage. Uh, Cause I was able, you were able to scout out my moves. So you can you saw the the superpower on my Absol. Um, you're able to scout out the foul play on the Porygon too. Like overall, I think it was it was really smart. I've done that. I, I think I did that to Matt once. The whole scouting the the, the switches and I got a six zero just by doing that. So I think it's really it's effective hey. at certain points of the match. Yeah, I mean, the the foul play on on the Metagross would have hurt not only because I would have taken damage, but it would also used up my my oh, berry, which helped me live the knockoff later on in the match. Yeah, that yeah. Would, oh, man, if only, if only. But that's fine. <laughs> I think we can actually just jump from here <laughs> to your match, and then we could jump down to Antony, and we'll jump back up. So that way we can just stay in sync and just get knocked. Okay. Um, uh, but Carlos, what did I love about Carlos? Okay. Um, the Super Fang, Hundoom. Oh, man. I was so afraid of Nasty Plot, though. I think Nasty Plot could have really done me a number. Um, knockoff Sock was also it, good. It was, what it was, was the item on Sock? Like... I need to know. What was Sock's Expert item? Belt. Expert Belt? Oh, Expert man. Belt. I really... Yeah, I yeah. So somebody scared. in the chat. Somebody in the chat guessed it right. Yeah, because I mean, I, I considered I considered the scarf, but then I I wouldn't be able to switch moves, and there were different things that I wanted to hit on your team. Yeah. Um. So that's a good call. Because had it been scarf, man. Yeah, I think like I mean. That would have been GG. <laughs> in a sense, I would have easily. Guessed. Yeah, like I wanted, I want, I wanted to be able to hit the Dragalge and then the Bronzong as well and the Porygon, so I didn't want to be stuck with just one move. So that's where the Expert Belt came from. Ooh. And thankfully it worked out. It did. No wonder you did so much damage with that earthquake. And actually, I was... Yeah, I was actually supposed to... Like, you know, going into a match, you're like, I'm gonna lead with this. If he has this, I'm gonna lead with this. So I saw the Absol, and I was going to lead with the Mill Tank and um, Hammer Arm, hoping to get that, that KO, like, first like first turn KO but for whatever reason I just I, I saw the Bronzong and I saw the um Golurk and I was like I have to lead um Houndoom and like looking back they both would have taken me out so I'm glad you didn't lead with either one of those <laughs> yeah uh I I don't know why I didn't consider Golurk I, I look back now and I'm like hmm I did have the Cobra Berry like I don't think I was so afraid. What mode was I afraid of? I I, I know Golurk just overall could have done me so much better than the way I actually even used it. But overall, you played it really, really good. Uh, the Mill Tank, I think Mill Tank just legit saved the day. Superhero. Uh, it's a better trained Mill Tank. Uh, first week too. Blue first week Mark. I had it. It's funny because for for Mark, he missed the Rock Slide, but you were able to connect it, so that saved you. If not. Yeah. <laughs> if you would have missed that rock slide, always, I always really rock bad. slide over Stone Age. I would have felt really bad if you missed that. Oh, rock it would have been, it would have been alright. Uh, but no, you deserve like we that. Have, we hyped up the, we hyped up the match too. Yeah, we did, but it lived to the hype. <laughs> I say it lived up to the hype. Cause the moon tank, yeah, everyone it was, was good. like, I was happy. It was funny because I was on a call with Jesse, and Jesse was watching this live. So as soon as I said, "Oh man, he could be running Mil scarf milk tank," he was like. What are you talking about, Squid? It was Scarf Mill Tank. Who does that? And then when he saw it, he was like, oh shoot, Squid was right. <laughs> <laughs> it was super funny. We laughed, we just laughed it off. It was like, ah oh, man. But that was a super fun match. That yeah, is also in the link down below, guys, if you guys want to watch that. I highly recommend it. It's a good laugh. It really is. Especially okay, actually that was a good non right, so or anything match this week. 
Like, yeah, I, yeah, there, there was not a lot of hacks there. I was, I was happy with it. Yeah, because if you watch all my other matches, <laughs> and the one you lost, exactly. <laughs> but that's fine. But let's jump into Antony because he has a lot of juicy stuff this week. Antony. Oh man. Oh, where do we even start with this man? <laughs> let's start from the beginning. Um. Okay. Uh, right from the beginning, he was put. He was putting the pressure on. Uh, the trick room, and then the webs that Mark set up for him. Oh, man. It was just... <laughs> it was crazy. Yep. It was crazy. I think uh, another thing was he played it very, very, very well. He, I think he knew the way Mark was going to play because as Jellison came in, set up the trick room, typically, oh, it's a... Um, I think Mark was able to see that Jellison did not have leftovers, so as a potential Cobra Berry, Mark knew he had to switch out. Uh, Antony knew he was going to switch out into Zatu, so he wasn't going to go for the will o -Wisp just yet. Went for the Trick Room, allowed Muck to come in, and Muck had very few switch-ins, I think. Yeah, very few switch-ins. Yeah, it was... He was able it was to dangerous. It was dangerous, that match. As soon as Zatu went down, that was like red flags for like Mark because I think that that opened the door for for Toxics from Mega Audino and allowed the will o -Wisp from the Chelsea Saint. I think the Cobra Berry was amazing prep. I think the Willow onto the Gyarados Trick Room. Yes. Bulking up in yes. Cinroy though. Oh my god. That. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> I've never seen definitely like the that. MVP for this week. I have never seen. Yeah, anything it was. Like that. I, I hadn't either. And Tony, I gotta give you props 100 percent for that. I mean, <laughs> I think like you just mentioned the the trick room, Culverberry, and then the Will O Wisp. That was just an insane combination. I was watching it and I could not believe what just. Happened. No, yeah, for sure. Um, the only thing. Which was scary was the, the transforms miracle first uh, into the Incineroar when the Incineroar was like at plus plus four plus three no plus three I think it was that was a scary moment it was one or the other but it was up there so I was actually running some calcs before that and uh, that crit mattered the crit that I told the crit got, drain punch yeah the crit drain punch mattered because it was doing about fifty percent and. The, his Incineroar has just recovered enough to to be above this 50%. But at the same time, you couldn't really say the crit mattered because in another... Well, it mattered for HP status because eventually I think Mark could have taken it down. But RNG could have played out the next turn either way. Maybe Antony would have gone first and got the Drain Punch off and killed, killed. But I think the Figure yeah. Berry on Antony was phenomenal it kept the incineroar alive even longer and yeah <laughs> like like you you see the transforming you think this thing is finally gonna go down and then it pops the berry and it's like almost back to full again so that was that was really nice it was that was i think antony had his prep was on par tonight today that this week that week or that whatever week it was because i'm like, <laughs> but it was up there uh, Alejandro and Antonio, they had both phenomenal tech this week to trump their opponents. I, man, what else? What else, man? Uh, he he had a lot. He had a lot of great bulk for did. Mark. It was it would have been really hard for him to break through. I think yeah. I think Mark's only way to break him through was really the Gyarados, and the Gyarados got willowed, and that was like ah. Uh, I don't think he had any help though. He did users. <laughs> So really, it was a huge step back. Uh, so guys, <laughs> prepare for the bulk if you face hand Tony. That's legit. <laughs> the only advice we can give. Yeah, it, I, I'm actually looking forward to facing him now because this was just insane. I like like I said in the beginning, he was putting the pressure on from like turn one. It was it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. I've like been his his Mew was asleep and it was good. It was definitely yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I don't think like we didn't get to see and much. And that's why actually the Mew or the Gliscor. So I was like, oh. 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yo, keep it that keep that comment for the end, Carlos. Keep it coming for the end. <laughs> You're about to spoil something, man. Buddy. No, I wasn't gonna. I wasn't. I wasn't gonna say that. I was gonna say that. That's why he moved up above you this oh. week. Like that. That was my reason for that. Oh no, no, His yeah. prep was just. It was just. Off, it was just off the chart. Off the charts. I think yeah, he went above and beyond. I I, I knew this was gonna happen. To tell you the truth, I knew because. Um, as offensive as Mark's team was, Antonio's team was too bulky, and unless. Mark made some like phenomenal plays from like straight off the bat, which he did start off phenomenally. But oh yeah, it was a great, it was a great start. It was a great start, but Antonio was like, you know what? I'm just gonna send in the big guns, and it was all downhill from there. <laughs> but let's jump into the number two spot with the Winnipeg, the Winnipeg Jelly Sense and their coach Matt, who has moved up a spot above Carlos. I still say Carlos is number yeah, one seed, but he, he actually knocked me off the <laughs> he knocked me off the number two spot this week simply because uh, for me his predictions were they were just just right like the poison jab into the Primarina and the Glacier into the Zygarde they were just perfect. Yeah, agreed. They were amazing, amazing reads. Nice job, Matt. Um, those really gave him the upper hand. Because it came down to the last mods. So imagine if those two plays had not happened. Um, I don't know. I was I was be. a little nervous because he was getting lynched out. He was getting bad. I, I actually thought he might lose it all. And then he just got the one. Just the one he needed. Yep. And that was it. Yep, and then got that blue flare off. So congratulations to Matt um, for that. I was super close. I think we covered most of it. It was pretty, I think it was like only 18 turns. It was a pretty fit, fast paced match. But I think he he stayed in, he stayed in when he needed to. He made those reads, which really, really helped him out. I think on both plays, it was like a, a fall switch or a U-turn out. And he kind of made that read, which is awesome. So great job, Matt. Keep up the good work. Yeah. Hopefully you see a number two seed, but you face Carlos pretty soon, so we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're looking forward to that. I think in two weeks. Yep, and then we'll just so the hopefully number one seed. fingers crossed. Uh, number one seed, the Burningham Aeron, and their coach, Lazy Ghost, <laughs> who only has one loss, and that is to who? Who? If you guessed it by now, yes, Carlos. To me. <laughs> That's why Carlos is number one, because he's beat. He's already beat me. He's beat Arthur. Who else have you beat? I think everyone knows he beat is on the low. <laughs> I actually said it a couple of weeks ago that I was I was happy to get him first so that I didn't have to face him when he had all this momentum built up already. Oh, uh, yeah. No, he has. Oh, man, I'm, I'm not looking forward to when I have to face him. Like, it threw me off that he has Gore guys and Needle King. I was like, when do you get it? When do you get all these mods? It really threw me off. But his matchup this week was really, really well. It was really good. Um, he played offense. His prep, as always, it was it was great. Like he played. I think it, it was funny because he went. For yeah, sludge he made wave. he made some good switches. He made for he went for sludge wave right off the bat with a Zygarde in the back with a fortress with a stack attacker. I was like, what is this man doing? I was like, nah, I can't believe this guy <laughs> is doing this right now. Uh, I think the Gore guys with Frisk is a great addition to his team. I love Frisk. Mods. I think he dropped it though. He dropped it? No. <laughs> yeah, I think he. I think he dropped it. Oh, I might pick it up. I might pick it up. Yeah. Who knows? I don't know, but Frisk I think is phenomenal. <laughs> it, it put in a lot of good work. It was a great Zygarde check. It was a phenomenal Zygarde check. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. He. he... Like every single time, you just knew that it was gonna come in, but there was nothing else that he, he should do. That was that was like perfect, and uh, the citrus berry light screen was kind of nice for me. Like I like that little, the little tech. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think another, uh, I think turn one overall kind of sums it up because turn one, he had the disadvantage. I would say in a sense because a scarf. Like hydro pump from. I because I feel like Trick. Had, 
I feel like Trig had the switch-ins, but um, he just didn't take any of them, and and that. You know, you know what I think is it was the lazy ghost was being lazy, and he just was like, you know what, I'm just gonna click this stuff. <laughs> he was just being lazy, and somehow he still, I don't know, I don't know. But I think he had really, really solid prep. He he was able to eat up a lot of hits and just dish back damage. That's what I hate about his team. It's very able to take hits and just recover, like with the, the Quagsire, uh, the fast Coco for the, the late game cleanup, the Kyrum. Um, but I, I'm really glad Arthur is able uh, to not use his, like, his um, lower tier mods. Because every week it was kind of like Coco and Kyrum, Coco and Kyrum. But now he's kind of able to put in Needle Queen into the playing field, Poor Guys, Quagsire, all those great mods. Yeah, and you and you see just how much work they're putting into. Um, I mean, the the Needle the Needle Queen, just like Needle King in the other match, was definitely putting work with the Earth powers and stuff. But they, that was insane. Yeah, but I think that pretty much sums up everybody. I think. One through eight, though, can really change. Um, I feel like Alejandro oh, yeah, can, sure. bow, can actually <clears throat> maybe even step into the one through eight. He's on, he's on, um, he's on a roll. But all these these um, placements, I don't think none of them are like secure, secure for whatever reason. We're we're jumping into except maybe um, the lazy squid. The lazy squid. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I stay in fifth because I've been in fourth spot and now I lost it. But as long as I make playoffs, I'll be fine. But I just want to keep having fun. I hope you're having fun. It's been a pretty awesome season so far. Oh yeah, dude, it's it's been it's been great. I'm I'm trying to get those nine wins just so I can just relax the rest of the season. <laughs> oh, I know what you mean. I well, I just won this week, so that makes me five wins. I'm five and three. Yeah, five and three. Okay, cool. So I got four wins to go. You still got well, you have you're like six and one, man. What am I talking about? You got three wins to go. Jeez. <laughs> three wins. That <laughs> but uh let's jump into the battle of the week. So viewers at home. Oh yeah, it, drum roll. It's... And the battle of the week for LDL is oh my god. <laughs> I just I'm sorry. I'm looking at the screen. The, the prep was just the prep was just so good. I'm so sorry, Antony, but Jesse has misspelled your name. So can, <laughs> can A Tony please come get his prize? If we have an A Tony, Ant <laughs> Anthony, it's not you. Antony, it's not you. We're looking for A Tony. Please, A Tony, come and get your prize because <laughs> you won against Mark. <laughs> I mean, it's not just that he won. It's just the prep was it was great, man. Yeah, um, yeah. I think he. I'm had really the looking best forward to overall. seeing what else he pull. Uh, the best prep, especially even against the LDL season six champ here. The LDL six champ. Yeah, yeah. But I think we're done. Here. I mean, Mark is Mark is no joke. No, he's not. He's not. I don't think Mark is still ranked. Actually, he just dropped to fourth. Which is crazy. He just dropped to fourth in his conference. That would be surprising if he didn't really. Off. Okay, I well, hadn't looked at that. I'm getting ideas in my head that shouldn't be happening. <laughs> but I think we rambled enough because <laughs> we're at 50, 58 minutes, my dude. 58 oh my god. Long minutes. It, That's is, crazy. it doesn't feel like it. It really doesn't. It does not. <laughs> well, once again, Carlos, I want to say thank you uh, for, thanks for, having for joining me. us, man. That was. That was awesome. Uh, can't wait to see what you have in store for us week eight as you face. Who did you face this week? Who are you facing? Brandon. Brandon. Ooh. That's Brandon, be I got a spicy uh, two, one. Two. Spicy one. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. The prep nice. was... No spoilers. <sighs> no spoilers, but the prep was hard. <laughs> uh, but yeah, down below. Oh, what am I saying down below? Oh, yeah. Down below, there's a whole bunch of links for you guys if you need merch like all these logos look at these sick logos you want to purchase one the link is down below check it out um but i'm gonna do my outro you guys are amazing stay blazing
Squid out. You don't have an outro, Carlos? <laughs> um, no, actually I don't. Bye. <laughs> Peace, guys. <laughs>